Good evening. This is All India Radio Kohima. I'm Jonas Yantan with Evening News. The headlines. President presents silver trumpet and trumpet banner to President's bodyguard. Union Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says government's aim is to reclaim Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare Dr. Mansuk Mandavia says India is committed to protecting global health. And Nagaland Governor Prof. Jagdish Mukhe says educational institutions must contribute towards empowering the community. Now the news in detail. President Draupadi Murmu presented a silver trumpet and trumpet banner to the President's bodyguard at a ceremony in Rashtra, Rashtra Pati Pawan today. In an audiovisual presentation during the ceremony, history and significance of the silver trumpet and trumpet banner and the role of the president's bodyguard were highlighted. Being the president of India's own troops, the bodyguard has the unique distinction of being the only military unit of the Indian Army privileged to carry the president's silver trumpet and trumpet banner. Union Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has said that the centre's aim is to implement the resolution unanimously passed in the Indian Parliament on the 22nd February 1994 to reclaim the remaining parts of Kashmir such as Gilgit and Balistan in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Attending the Surya Diwar celebrations in Srinagar today, the Defence Minister pointed out that some areas illegally occupied by Pakistan are still devoid of progress and Pakistan is fully responsible for inhuman incidents against innocent Indians in POK. Singh added that post-independence people of Jammu and Kashmir were deprived of development and tranquility for decades until the government, led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, came to the helm and abrogated Article 370, bringing a new era of peace and progress. The doors of development and peace have now been opened in Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, with the people of the two union territories reaping the benefits of the welfare schemes of the Government of India, the Defence Minister added. Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare Dr. Mansuk Mandavia has said that the central government under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's leadership attached the topmost importance to the health sector. He stressed that India is committed to protecting global health and making sure to leave behind for the coming generations a better and healthier planet. Mandavia said this while addressing the second G20 health ministers meeting at Bali in Indonesia today. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss the progress and way forward on priorities in the healthcare sector. The minister said that India is committed to contributing immensely for creating a future-ready and resilient global healthcare ecosystem. He also elaborated on building global health resilience wherein the proposal of a financial intermediary fund was discussed. Governor of Assam and Nagaland, Professor Jagdish Mukhi, today said that an educational institution must contribute towards empowering the community. Loading Gentria Vidyalaya School in Kohima during an interaction with the students and school, he said the institution was emerging into a premier institution by imparting quality education to students. Muki observed that the vision of the school to cater to the education needs of the children of transferable central government employees, including defence and barra military personnel, by providing common programme on education was commendable. The governor asked students to work hard and take guidance of parents and teachers in deciding career choices ahead. Muki also urged the teachers to deliver their best for the growth and welfare of the students and school in general. This news comes to you from All India Radio, Kohima. You can also listen to this news bulletin on News On Air app and YouTube channel AIA News, Kohima. Director General News and Director General All India Radio, Dr. Vasudha Gupta, is on a week-long visit to different AIR stations of the Northeast region. While paying a visit to AIR Isol station in Mizoram today, Dr. Gupta was briefed about the broadcasting facilities and program activities provided to the listeners. Gupta spoke about new initiatives to be taken up, especially in promoting traditional music and folk songs. She urged the staff to make a proposal in showcasing Mizo identity to the rest of the world through radio programs. 
the Director General also interacted with the staff of Regional News Unit of the station and reviewed activities of the RNU. She also inspected facilities of the newsroom and studios. More than 219 crores 58 lakh vaccine doses have been administered in the country so far under the nationwide COVID-19 vaccination drive. The Union Health and Family Welfare Ministry said over 1,22,000 doses were administered in the last 24 hours. During the same period, 1,112 new COVID cases were reported in the country. The country's active caseload currently stands at 20,821 and it is at 0.05%. The recovery rate is currently at 98.77%. A total of 1,892 people have recovered in the last 24 hours and with this the total recoveries touched over 4 crore 40 lakh and 97,000. A total of more than 90 crore COVID tests have been conducted in the country so far. In the last 24 hours over 1 lakh 44,000 tests were conducted. The Pratan Mantri Sangra Halaya, located at Din Murti Road in New Delhi, was visited by over 1,15,000 visitors till last month. The Sangra Halaya was opened to the public on the 21st of April this year. During his visit to Sangra Halaya, Prime Minister Narendra Modi mentioned that whosoever visits the Sangra Halaya will walk away with a better understanding of the greatness of Indian democracy, its enormous form and the possibility it offers. The ministry said that national leaders have visited the Sankra Laya. A seminar and workshop on Prime Minister formalization of micro food processing enterprises, PMFME scheme, was organized by Department of Industries and Commerce in Nokluk and Kohima districts today. Nokluk STO C. Punyang said that unless people are self-sufficient, the country cannot be called self-reliant. He said a PMFME scheme is part of the vision of the government to make the country self-reliant by way of generating employment and income and also to promote formalization of the sector. The scheme will support farmers, producer organizations, self-help groups, cooperative societies and new and existing individual on the pedias. In Kohima, functional manager DIC Sihangle Wand said that the scheme will provide capacity building of entrepreneurs through technical knowledge, skill training and hand-holding support devices. It will provide increased access to credit to existing micro-food processing entrepreneurs for technology upgradation support to target groups. Wand said the scheme will adopt a one-district, one-product approach to increase procurement of inputs, availing common services and marketing of products. Indian Railways will launch a month-long mega safety drive from tomorrow as safety continues to be its foremost priority. Railway Board has directed all zonal railways to ensure that officers in headquarters and divisions carry out thorough inspections and ensure the correction of deficiencies found during inspections. It said at least one headquarter officer must be on inspection on each day during the drive. The Ministry added that directives for this mega safety drive from Railway Board include regular patrolling of all tracks and the same should be monitored on day-to-day -day basis as well as surprise checks at stations to ensure proper operational practices are being followed. And now 20 News, here the main points again. President presents silver trumpet and trumpet banner to President's bodyguard. Union Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says government's aim is to reclaim Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare Dr. Mansukh Mandavia says India is committed to protecting global health. And Nagaland Governor Prof. Jagdish Mukhi says educational institutions must contribute towards empowering the community. That is all we have in this evening news bulletin. Good night.